George Russell's Lydian chromatic concept presents a drastically different view of the relationship between melody and harmony, and of music theory in general. When I first discovered it, it was a revelation to me, and it's something that every musician should study. But it's so different that it can be very difficult to understand. Russell invents a myriad of new terms for old concepts. It's very difficult to understand what he's talking about when even conventional musical structures seem exotic. In this video, I will attempt to explain Russell's theory and, whenever possible, to translate Russell's concepts into more conventional musical terminology. In a following video, I will show you how I personally use Russell's concepts in order to analyze and compose music. A fair portion of Russell's book is devoted to justifying his theory using the overtone series. I think this is unnecessary and it distracts from his fundamental concepts, so I'll be skipping that part of the book. Russell's most important idea is that chords and scales, meaning modes, are the same thing. This contradicts fundamental concepts from traditional harmonic theory. For example, in traditional theory, a C major triad can have multiple meanings. It could be a tonic chord in C major, a subdominant chord in G major, or a dominant chord in F major. So it could accompany a C major, a G major, or an F major scale. Here's a chart from Gottfried Weber's book, The Theory of Musical Composition, that shows the multiple meanings, the various functions of chords in different keys. If we use a 7th chord instead, we have fewer choices. A C major 7th chord will work with a C scale and a G scale, but not with an F scale, because the B flat and the F scale will clash with the B natural in the chord. Let's add an 11th to the chord. This 11th is an F natural, which is found in the C scale, but not the G scale, which has an F sharp. So there's only one scale that fits this chord. Those of us who teach beginning music theory don't see a lot of 11th chords, but George Russell did. He was a working jazz musician right after World War II. The jazzers at that time were beginning to use more complex chords with chord extensions like 9ths, 11ths, and 13ths. These chord extensions were used to spice up the blandness of conventional triads. Since jazz is an improvisatory art, this would sometimes happen on the fly. So a soloist improvising a melody would need to anticipate the possibility that these chord extensions might pop up. In our earlier example, the improviser could use a C, a G, or an F major scale over the C major chord, but since chord extensions could be added, that person would need to avoid notes that might clash with those extensions. If we added the 7th, a B natural, they would need to avoid the B flat when using an F major scale. If we added the 11th, F natural, they would need to avoid the F sharp if using a G major scale. Russell noticed that if you stack up all of the chord extensions to the 13th, you have 7 notes, and that these 7 notes form a diatonic scale. If you know what that scale is, you don't need to worry about avoiding certain notes. All of the notes of the scale that make up that chord will automatically fit. Russell called this chord scale unity. Russell noticed something peculiar about this major 13th chord, that it doesn't actually sound very good because the 11th produces a rather nasty dissonance with the 3rd. This dissonance is relieved if the 11th is raised by a half step. When this is done, it changes the notes not just of the chord itself, but also of the scale that's associated with it. The mode of the scale is now Lydian rather than major. Because of this, Russell believed that the fundamental mode of music theory should be Lydian rather than major. This causes all kinds of problems with terminology. Russell recognizes seven diatonic modes, but for the most part, he abandons their conventional names. For example, he calls Mixolydian the second mode of Lydian, and he calls Dorian its sixth mode. I think that Russell wanted us to learn to think about modal relationships in a new way, and forcing us to learn new technical terms helps to erase old prejudices. Be that as it may, this is confusing and probably unnecessary because of Russell's second big concept, that chords are independent of the tonality of the piece. 
As I said those dreaded words, I swear I heard Shankarian theorists rolling over in their desk chairs. This idea contradicts the basic tenets of music theory, including Shankarian theory. I think it helps to remember that Russell was not looking to Mozart and Schubert for his harmonic models. He was formulating his theory at the same time that bebop jazz was developing. Jazz during this time period was experimental, and the chord progressions did not have to follow conventional patterns. Russell was also familiar with early 20th century concert music. In that music, chords tend not to follow conventional harmonic patterns. They also tend to last for rather a long time, and they exist in their own self-contained harmonic worlds. For example, take a look at the beginning of Stravinsky's Petrushka. Stravinsky is not using harmony to form chord progressions, chord patterns that pull toward the tonic of the piece. His chords are stable, drone-like. Each one acts like its own tonic. Each chord could potentially go on forever. It doesn't have to eventually resolve to something else. Likewise, the melody that Stravinsky builds over each chord is stable within that chord. It doesn't yearn to resolve to the next chord and eventually to tonic. This is what Russell calls vertical tonal gravity. It should also be noted that Stravinsky's melody is pentatonic. This is not one of Russell's most important modes. He labels it as an official scale. Official scales are subsets of the fundamental modes. Pentatonic is a subset of the diatonic scale. Official modes can be common modes like pentatonic, or they can be modes made up by the composer. Russell acknowledged that not all chords exhibit vertical tonal gravity. Some chords, like chords in classical and romantic music, tend to exhibit a horizontal pull toward tonic. He called this horizontal tonal gravity. So there are two different types of chord scale combinations, ones that are stable in and of themselves, those are vertically oriented, and ones that pull toward a final destination, a final tonic, those are horizontally oriented. Vertical and horizontal structures can be mixed in the same piece. Russell demonstrates this in his analysis of John Coltrane's solo over Coltrane's own tune, Giant Steps. He labels a short horizontal structure near the end, C sharp minor 7, F sharp 7, B major 7. This is what is known in jazz as a 2-5-1. It is a common chord progression, and it's one that links these three chords into a key based on the last chord. In classical music, this is what we would call a cadence formula. We would expect most of the chords in the piece to be related to this tonic as well, so having three chords in a row aligned to tonic would not be noteworthy. But in bebop jazz, it is something special to have such a clear-cut relationship between the chords. In this formula, the chords are not isolated occurrences. They all relate to and pull to the last chord, the tonic. This is one of the things that makes this a horizontal structure. The melody also pulls toward the tonic. It does so through the use of a long tone, the B, that pulls downward toward its resolution on the A sharp. This sounds like a 4-3 suspension over the F sharp chord. Another horizontal structure occurs earlier in the piece. Here, a long tone D becomes a part of a D7 before falling to a C, which is the seventh of the chord. That seventh resolves to a B in the following G chord, just as it would in classical music. So in these horizontal structures, both the melody and the harmony are pulling toward a goal, a tonic. And this yearning for a goal is not within a single chord, it's spread out over multiple chords. Certain scales are particularly associated with horizontal, goal-oriented movement. These include the major scale, the major flat 7 scale, also known as mixolydian, the major augmented 5th scale. It has eight notes, the seven notes of the major scale and the raised 5th. 
the so-called African-American blues scale. These are horizontal because they have the natural fourth, the perfect fourth compared to tonic. This interval tugs toward tonic. While these scales are primarily horizontal, they can be used vertically as well. The major scale is what we saw in the Coltrane examples. The major flat seven scale mixolydian is found in folk songs and many pop songs. The major augmented fifth scale includes the pitches of the harmonic minor scale, if you start the scale on the sixth scale degree. The African American blues scale contains the notes of a standard blues scale along with a few other notes. Russell doesn't really explain this scale, but I assume that he based it on a standard blues scale. And then added pitches to it that are commonly added to a blues scale, like a leading tone. Or a major third. To sum up, there's music which is vertical, which is based on a single chord and is stable within that chord, and there's music which is horizontal, which is based on a progression of chords within a key. Regardless of whether the music is horizontal or vertical, there is a relationship between chords and scales. Traditional music theory recognizes this and matches scales with keys. For example, the scale of C major matches all of the diatonic chords in the key of C major. Russell's theory tends to treat chords as isolated from an overall key. Isolated chords in conventional theory would tend to be treated in multiple keys. Because Russell is dealing with chords that have chord extensions up to the 13th, the chords and scales are linked. The seven pitches of the scales are identical with the seven pitches of the chords. Diatonic theory might seem to be limited by the use of only one scale per key, but this is not the case, since every diatonic scale contains seven modes. So even with the same notes in the scale and the melody and the chords of a key, there is considerable variety. The same is true in Russell's system. While based on the Lydian mode, Russell shows that other modes are used as well. For example, Mixolydian, which is based on the second scale degree of the Lydian mode, or Dorian, which is based on the sixth scale degree in Lydian. Russell also allowed additional pitches to be added to his system based upon two types of chromaticism. We'll talk about that next time.